short and it's in the air to Freitas and that's the end of John Wright. Put by the Freitas. Right out for 43. New Zealand 86 for 5. Well this is why John Embry's been brought on to bowl. A shortish ball there. John Wright taking advantage of it. Putting it down the throat of Philip de Freitas. And that's the wicket that England wanted. usual ritual of counting the fieldsman. It's quite tempting to hit straight back over the bowler's head at the moment, the field up. Swings hard across the line, it's in the air, but it's falling short of Radford. Bracewell didn't collect it as well as he would have liked, fortunately, because it would have been quite a simple catch to Neil Radford. straight down the ground good shot should go away for four it's a bit slow the about the upfield but it makes it yes that was a marvelous stuff it absolutely sensible he hit it very straight you can see from the direction the ball went and he hit it in the air but as we always say there's plenty of room behind the bowler but watch this he hit it transcendently well absolutely straight bang it went performance and, and excellent it's a fine stroke Oh, good-looking shot. Well-timed from John Bracewell. Pick up at least two. The field spread fairly far and wide. Henry Blofeld mentioned a moment ago, England are in such a commanding position, they can afford to cut off the boundary. So well stopped again by Martin Moxon, but he deflected it, so singles picked up. And that's uh, the end of the over. 110 for five. Good looking square cut. Almost off the front foot from John Bracewell. Coming back for the second. And a good piece of fielding out there. Tim Robinson. But of course, having said that, John, you know how cricket can turn around, and we'll probably get egg white, we'll wave my face, and England will be struggling at 90 for 8 sometime later on today, because, I mean, this does happen. But logically, I think you must say the Poms are in control of this one now. Oh, no question about that. John Bracewell, facing. Well, that's uh, a useful shot for runs, very fine. David Capel. Doing his best round there, but he can't cut it off, so four more. Four more runs here. Not quite sure what that came from. We'll have to wait for umpire. Runs, inside edge. I wonder if that carried through there. It was a difficult angle. It came back. It was to be interesting to see when we look at it again whether that was a catch to French, in fact. Um, if it wasn't, it was beautifully placed. No, it, well... I suppose it was a bit like that one he caught, actually, wasn't it? Yes, it was dropping, but I suppose technically he could have got to it. Yeah. This is in the air. It's just cleared the infield. Not much power on it. In fact, it was a real uh, chip shot. And one run for his trouble, John Bracewell. That was well placed. That's the sort of thing you just have to do then try and really hit the bad one and see if they can get the odd boundary. Yes, one feels that these two are playing, they've got a difficult decision because they must try and bat for the full 45 overs. It's clumsy not to do that and it damages your chances, but they've also got to look to push it along, but I still think they've got it hit straight. All that space behind the bowler. Don't hit across it. Yep. Another single. Singles are certainly coming, but uh, as we've said, England don't look too worked up about that problem. Score ticking over, 127. Ten overs to go. I wonder what they can expect to get. The trouble is they just haven't got the wickets in hand at the moment, have they? This is the thing. I mean, one, you know, lose a couple more wickets, and it's what you might call how's your father time, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. 
well bowl, but uh, <laughs> he's got runs, Chris Kugelein. Didn't quite get through to the boundary down there. Chris Broad, the man fielding. Big swing by Bracewell, appeal. Turned down by George Morris. And a leg by signal. John Bracewell here again to swing this away to leg side. Put it just outside the line, I would have thought there. Pitched outside also the ball. So uh, a little bit too much doubt there for the umpire. Stroke from Kugelein. Will Addy bring him a single though? The sweeper out there is De Freitas. And Chris Kugelein continues to bat extremely well. Goes now 35. Grace will hammers it away down to long on this time. So the singles are certainly coming. Four of them from four deliveries in this over. And New Zealand's approaching 150. I don't think Mike going to be too unhappy um, about that. If he can keep them down to under 180, 190, he'll be quite pleased. Bowls. Bigger line, clean bowl by Embry. And he's in a 149 for six. So good at ease that by Chris Kugelheim. Here it comes again, very full again by John Embry. Kugline playing across the ball, clean bold, so that leaves New Zealand at 149 for six. Lost it by Bracewell, good hit, four runs. Caught about a second. The ball was travelling slowly. Cable had a long way to run. And John Bracewell contemplated a second. Didn't take it. So Ian Smith has one. New Zealand a 155 for six in the 42nd over. Hammered away by Bracewell. And that's beaten Radford. That's all right. Nicely placed by Ian Smith. He'll have time for two here. And that's the end of the over. So 43 now completed. Two to go, 165 for six. Big swing by Ian Smith. He might get four for this one. He will. Well, that's what the crowd would like to see, a typical one-day heave. Just basically shutting his eyes and hoping Ian Smith it will go anywhere. And anywhere, he's quite happy about that because it did go to the boundary. Another big swing, well that's a big hit. a more controlled shot by Ian Smith. Still typically one day, but uh, he quite enjoyed that right off the middle of the bat. And sits over the mid-wicket boundary. Four runs. Giving himself a little bit of room. And swinging. Now Mike Gavin once again a strength to the leg side boundary. So opening up the offside. So what is Ian Smith going to do with this delivery? Straight back over the goal. He's had this time. Four more. Oh, David Capel has collected the sight screen, and that could be really painful. Just driving on the offside this time. And away goes Brace when he must be run out. He is. And 
looking at this. Bracewell didn't like it much. Let's have a look at it again. He doesn't like getting run out for out at any stage of his innings, John Bracewell. And we have a look at this. He's with a feeling. And Chris Broad, I think it was. Very quickly to the ball. Throwing a very good throw over the top of the stumps. And uh, no complaints there. John Bracewell well out. And I think if you have a look in the dressing room, he the replays he won't be at all disappointed 183 for seven on the last over that's a big hit could be caught and is caught neil fairbrother so new zealand falling away towards the end of their inning as ian smith departs for 19. Well, this is pretty typical of one-day stuff in the last couple of overs. It's all health and skelter. Batsman firing the bat at anything, and this time it was a full toss from John Embry. Ian Smith not quite getting on to it, getting underneath it, hitting a high ball. Only to be caught safely by Neil Fairbrother. A good innings there from, John, uh, from Ian Smith for 19. New Zealand 183 for 8. drive by Martin Stedden. He'll have just the one run. And that'll leave Willie Watson to face the last ball with New Zealand at 183 for eight. We'll wait and see what Willie can do. Well, that's a pretty effective shot. He should get two for this, and he will get two. So Willie Watson picks up two runs off the last ball of the innings, and New Zealand at the end of 45 overs a 186 for the loss of eight. Well, that was a good recovery by the New Zealand batsmen, particularly by Chris Kugeline at number six and John Bracewell at number seven. They came together when the score was 86 for five in the 27th over and had a partnership of 63 runs in just under 13 overs. A good contribution also from Ian Smith towards the end with a hard hit 19 off just 11 balls. Snedden and Watson were there at the end. Earlier in the inning, John Wright had done a good job as the New Zealand captain and the final total of 186 for eight. Not quite as many as New Zealand would have wanted, but nevertheless respectable. A look at the England bowling figures. Philip De Freitas was expensive. David Capel, a very impressive opening spell with his first five overs, only costing seven runs. He got a bit more expensive after that, but still a good all-round return for him. Jarvis and Radford did their job in bowling at about four runs and over, or conceding under four runs and over. And John Embury once again, three for 38, the destroyer of the lower order. So England required 187 to win in 45 overs, and their opening batsmen once again were Chris Broad and Martin Moxon. First ball of the innings, Watson to Broad. New Zealand scoring 186 at a run rate of just over four. And it was a very good start given to them by Reid and Wright after three overs, 18 runs on the board then problems again in the middle order. The opening run, not a particularly convincing stroke, but a run nonetheless. So that's the end of the first over, one without loss. It's fine for gap this time, does Chris Broad. And there'll be time for two runs, Chris Kugelain having to chase out there. So Broad continues to farm the strike. In fact, Moxon hasn't had a ball to face as yet. Three on the board without loss. Away they go for a single. And well run. So Martin Moxon gets a, a ball, at least a run off the first ball he faces. And England go to five without loss in the second over. Through the gap, Mo Moxon, and now Bracewell has the chase. The outfield quickening up now with the strong, hot sun on it. And three runs taken. In the air and dropped. Golden opportunity for New Zealand, but John Wright couldn't hold the catch. And it's an escape for Chris Broad. may sound, New Zealand have got to take those chances. Valiant effort by John Wright, they're a very difficult chance. But 
other days, those ones tend to stick, which brings about a better result for your team. Back to you in Chatfield. And he puts it on the deck. Martin Moxley just pushing at that one there. And that really is uh, a very easy catch. England running a run rate at the moment of 3.33. And Willie Watson now to bowl over number seven. In the air and just wide of the diving John Wright again. Chris Broad once more hitting it in the air. And again, lucky to survive. <laughs> Lovely flowing off drive from Chris Broad. The outfield still a little on the slow side as Ken Rutherford chases. And there'll be three runs for Broad. in the air for a way. It was a good looking shot and uh, may struggle to reach the boundary. Ken Rutherford, the man doing well out there. In fact, that boundary's been brought in quite a way, hasn't it, Henry, from the grandstand? Yes, brought in a long way. Also, of course, with all the recent rain, it's very heavy, this draft. It's slowing it up. It was very obvious when New Zealand batted. I think with a pass right field, that 186 was worth about 210. And we've seen Broad straight driving down the ground in the previous over uh, for, uh, for Watson for three. And that one normally would have gone away for four. But because of the heavy outfield, it pulled up and only three were scored. In the air. Oh, very agile sort of a dive for Mark Brakes back. He did his best to get to it. Threw himself a long, long way, but it's four runs. Trying to look for a word to describe that, uh, Henry. It was incredible. We'll see if we can pick it up here. It was oh, it was it was the sort of thing where some Russian gymnast eventually wins a gold medal doing something rather similar, or someone breaks the world high jump record. You know, it's, it's isn't it? It's that sort of wonderful attempt. Do you know England are having all the luck at the moment? This game suddenly could change round. I've got that sort of feeling. Oh, he's gone. Chris Kugeline. Martin Moxon out, whipping it away on the leg side. In the air, Chris Kugeline takes the catch. Willie Watson, the bowler. And Henry, you picked it right. Well, I had that sort of feeling. It was fairly impermanent. There was a little bit of hit or miss about it. And Martin Moxon hit that well, but this time he didn't beat the field. Chris Kugeline took a very good catch. He pulled it in very well, watched it, went up two-handed and caught it in the classical manner. So that is one wicket there for New Zealand. They've got a few more to get, but an important one. He's been in good form and a good catch there, as you see. It came to him so quickly, but he kept his head and you know, he took it well, didn't he? So England, 37 for one wicket. well run that was very well played wasn't it you could see uh, broad just dropping his wrist on it so it didn't go too far or too fast and it was a very safe single as long as you went straight away tim robinson's on 10 and his nottingham teammate chris broad is facing well played away through the leg side chase on hipper ken rutherford and two runs takes chris broad to 27. 57 for one in the 14th it's end of the fence first bounce John Bracewell calling out for uh, Willie Watson out there at uh, long on to get around and catch it but really it was a very hopeful uh, shot from John Bracewell ball was never very close to Watson at all good bold lofted shot there by Chris Broad and it was a long way from Willie Watson even though Bracewell was imploring him to catch it 
balls. Just sort of very, very free in his shots here. He's got the 31 off 48 balls. This one again looking to play an attacking shot. Big high back lift. But he hit around the ball. Full toss. Hard chance drops. Once again, it was the New Zealand captain, John Wright. Well, the New Zealand team just not having any luck at all today with the catches. Admittedly, that was a very sharp chance, but it certainly went to hand. It's a very sharp chance, this for John Wright once again. Just tried with one hand. Perhaps it might have been better to go for two, but that's the second one he's put down this innings. One at Gully earlier on off, uh, again, Chris Broad. Got to hold those catches to get the England batsmen on the defensive. <laughs> to be over from Bracewell, it's 62 for one. Well, that was a very bad ball from John Bracewell. It offered almost a chance, ironically, out of deep backward square, but in the end, the ball got what it deserved. It was hit to the fence before. Pretty juicy full toss for uh, Chris Broad. Yes, John Wright concentrating on leg stump here, but over pitching that one, as you said, Peter, nearly... Uh created a chance there, but uh, unintentionally, I should imagine. And four more runs to Chris Broad. He's only got four fieldsmen on the leg side. That certainly stopped the wave in his tracks. The airwaves as the ball struck from Chris Fly abroad. Very well struck shot that over the mid-wicket boundary. Grace were really pushing that one in. Particularly pleased with the fact that he was hit for six in the over. It's 83 for one. Good take down the leg side. Ian Smith, though, uh, broke the wicket as a reflex action. Didn't even bother to appeal. He scored he was never over the line. It's a good take by Ian Smith. He's kept very well the whole season in New Zealand. Well, he hasn't dropped anything, I don't think. I can't recall him missing a chance at all. It's with uh, takes like this that have proven him to be, I think, the better keeper of the two on show this season in New Zealand. Oh, another one goes down. Just like Jeff Howarth was saying before, the slower pace of Kugelheim through the air, particularly when he bowls a slower ball like that, and uh, Chris Broad completely mistimed it, offered a chance. Unfortunately for Chris Kugeline, didn't get two hands around it. Just a single Chris Broad goes to 48 with that run. And Martin Sneddon is going to start his fifth. Fortune has favoured today. Chris Broad is on strike for him. 48. Over the top. Off to the fence, perhaps. Yes, it will go to the fence, and this will be Chris Broad's 50. The yeah, outfield a bit spongy down there, even though the ball held up. Still had enough way on to get to the fence. 52 is Chris Broad's score, and England are 92 for one. Okay, Chris Broad has got the three chances, but he's rode his luck, and... Uh the shot like that has enabled him to go on to 52. And making England's type uh, 187 that much more easy. Big swing by Robinson. He's picked it up nicely and puts it away back with a square for four runs. Slow and wide and signaled wide. So another wide from Chris Kugelein. He's trying to vary his pace here. 
And he held that back, but it was rather too wide down the leg side. And tactically, he's right, trying to vary his pace, because it's a very good batting pitch here. The ball coming onto the bat nicely. Big hit, and it just bounces short of the boundary, and it's four runs. Big hit, and caught. Chris Broad finally goes, and held by Ken Rutherford. And Broad is out for 56. Martin Stedden bowling to Broad then. Broad's been somewhat free. Comes down the way. He gives himself a bit of room there and lofts it upishly into cover there. And Kenny Rutherford takes a, a very good catch. And that's the break New Zealand have been looking for and waiting for for some time. Chris Broad's played well for England. 56, 79 balls, 105 minutes. 112 for two. Mike Getting. Oh, no. Ian Smith dropping the ball. He broke the stumps, but I don't think he had the ball in his hand. No, I was going to say it's seven men saving the one and his six. Martin Crowe's a bit deep there, but... I think, in fact, he would have been home. No, no, he wouldn't by a very long way. If he had the ball, that would have been out. See how wrong one can be. <laughs> it's an interesting field. John Wright perhaps deciding that he's going to force England to... Well, down the wicket, and that's exactly what they've done. England hit it over the top. Tim Robinson seeing the field down the wicket. Four runs, end of the over, 124 for two. Over the top, four runs. The field's up. Ken Rutherford. Really, with this pace of bowling, Henry, you, you can get down the wicket, can't you? Yes, I, I don't think Ken Rutherford does go on to the bat fast enough. I think that's probably fair to say. But he's a fairly ordinary bowler. And how much better it would be, it seems to me, than have Willie Watson here, to have Danny Morrison, who's a very real prospect for the future of New Zealand cricket. Down the leg side, umpire George Morris. No, Brian Aldridge, I should say. Why? Quite right, too. But, I mean, let Morrison learn the hard way if he's going to come here and, g and get tapped a little. It's going to teach him a bit. He's an intelligent lad. He can learn. And it's the only way he's going to learn. Down the wicket again, over the top. And that will be into the long on boundary for four. Yes, that's the point, because we're not doing any better at the moment here anyway, so why not play uh, Danny Morrison? Why not give him experience? Because we'll probably have to come back with him next year and we'll, we've lost a year's experience. It's in the air. Oh, he's got it, second take, Ewan Chatfield. Down at long on, or deepish mid on, I should say. Tim Robinson trying to hit Ken Rutherford over the top. Ewan Chatfield reaching high and got it on the second take. Well, here's the wicket. Tim Robinson, the batsman, trying to hit it over. Ewan Chatfield down there at a deepish mid on position. We're back live. Neil Fairbrother, first ball he's received. Good looking shot, four runs. Well, you can't do better than that when you come in, can you, to your first cherry? No, that was, uh, that was amazing. He timed it so well. It just uh, shot away through the, the cover point area. You know, it may be that after his disappointing start, as this catch again, Chatfield said, oh, my goodness me, but look at it. He's recovered himself and didn't snatch at it the second time, and that's so crucial. Well done, him. Well, we've got a commentator change as Chris Kugeline comes in. Oh, a, the reverse lap. Looks like it's running away for four. You and Chatfield after it. Grant Nisbet in with Jeff Howe. Mike Gatting comprehensively cleaned out by Willie Watson for 33. And England lose their four, but 167.
That certainly put the commentator's curse on Mike Gatting there, saying how well he's been batting, but here's the replay. He's giving himself a little bit of room there, Mike Gatting. Hit it through the offside. Missed it. New Zealand, uh, England, 167 for four. Fielding by Martin Crowe, and well backed up. In fact, it was Mark Greatbatch, who, as usual, was very lively in the field, and we're all set for the charge of the Light Brigade. Yes, uh, encroaching over the boundary a little bit there. Early on in the day, they pushed a few people, a few kids off behind the gate. Ewan Chatfield's over comes to an end. So it's the debris left over from the Mexican wave. Just a few other deliberate throws, I should imagine. But it's a sight that we don't really want to see in New Zealand cricket. There's enough hold up as it is in the game of cricket without having untidy Kiwis about. can get very dangerous for the players if there's the odd thing or vegetable or fruit around the ground the players chasing after it and slip and injure himself out of the stumps and David Capel looks as though he wants to walk away the umpire says not out be interesting in the replay. Well, Rutherford certainly thinks uh, it was out. I'm sure he did touch it. It's just a question of whether it was in or out of his crease. Yeah, he did touch it effect onto the stump. You can see there the bat up in the air. Well, probably has got a grievance, Ken Rutherford. There's only three runs to to get before the end of this game. I don't think there should be too much panic over it. Straight back over the bowler's head. That'll go down to the fence for four runs. And England win this game by six wickets. England go to 188 for six as Neil Fairbrother strikes the winning run. So nice to see all the kids there. Nice to see everyone enjoying what was not a great game of one-day cricket, but uh, certainly they saw some good cricket, some good batting by the Englishmen. And I'm sure that uh, England will be very happy with their performance and go ahead now to Napier, two up, and very confident and encouraged by the way they've performed over the past two one-day internationals. Yes, another very solid performance by England. New Zealand really didn't score enough runs. They scored 186 for eight in the 45 overs. But England uh, deserved to win here, just as they did in Dunedin. And New Zealand will have to rethink maybe their team selection, maybe their tactics in the match, but whatever. They'll go to Napier on Wednesday, 2-0 down in the series. And the best New Zealand can do now is to salvage a draw out of this uh, four-match series. The second, the third match in Napier on Wednesday and the fourth at Eaton Park, Auckland next uh, Saturday. A very good crowd here at Lancaster Park today. The weather was good. Unfortunately, New Zealand's performance couldn't quite match those other two factors. And New Zealand fell well short of the mark. England, in the end, did it uh, quite comfortably. After New Zealand were 186 uh, for 8 at the end of 45 overs, the match is reduced to 45 overs because of the late start after rain in Christchurch this morning. And then England came back, and this is how England batted in a very solid-looking scoreboard there. Martin Moxon, the only apparent failure, but he was associated in a good opening stand of 37 with uh, Chris Broad. At least, uh, yes, Chris Broad. Uh, Robinson batted well, so did Gatting. Fairbrother and Capel saw it through, and England were comfortably home by six wickets in the end. Willie Watson did well to get two for 31 off nine overs. Chatfield wasn't quite on song the way he was in the first of the matches in Dunedin. 
John Bracewell again struggling with his line. The off-spinner really has gone off form in recent uh, weeks. Martin Snedden took uh, one for 33 off nine. Not a bad performance from him. Cougar line useful enough. None for 31 off six. And Ken Rutherford took the other wicket. But really, uh, once that start was made by Broad and by Moxon, there was never really much question about who was going to win this game. A very consistent all-round performance, both in batting and bowling, and a much improved fielding performance by the England team. And as uh, uh, Mike Gatting takes his side north to Napier for the third match in this Rossman's Cup one-day series, the England camp must be brimful of confidence with their one-day form. The New Zealand team, well, they're going to have to make some changes, I'm sure, for the third of the matches. That game is at McLean Park in Napier on Wednesday. Today here at Lancaster Park in Christchurch, a convincing win to England by six wickets. And the man of the match, Chris Broad of Nottinghamshire.